Now, tomorrow marks 20 years since the deadly terror attacks in the United States. Almost 3,000 lives were lost in the four attacks on the 11th of September 2001, carried out by Islamic militant group Al-Qaeda. This, of course, sparked the war in Afghanistan. The 20-year anniversary follows the recent withdrawal of the U.S. troops from Afghanistan after the Taliban took over. Let's discuss this now with Wits University's Honorary Professor of International Relations, John Stremlau. Prof, thank you so much for joining us. Um, how did 9-11 change the psyche of Americans? It's a very interesting question, but I'm not sure I know the full answer. What I do know, however, is that there was a great failure of leadership. The international community supported the initial uh, response by the United States to go after al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, and, and it was backed by NATO and everyone else in the UN. However, then Bush turned to Iraq and did what his father did not do, which is to try to go and get rid of Saddam Hussein under the false pretenses of nuclear weapons, as we know, and then involved itself in nation building. And it turned to nation building in the case of Afghanistan. And both have been humiliating setbacks for the United States, the last chapter of which in Afghanistan was written by Joe Biden just recently. So how has, have lessons been learned um, in the past 20 years uh, by the United States about how to respond uh, to terror attacks? Yes, they certainly have been in terms of uh, using uh, over the horizon high technology. We saw this in Kabul just a week or so ago with the drone attacks on the uh, uh, alleged bombers and in response to the, uh, and the other uh, drone attack in response to the bombing at Kabul airport. Um, and, but this raises real moral and ethical questions that I won't go into. Joe Biden has certainly learned the lesson of nation building, and it was demonstrated dramatically by the collapse of, in one day, of this high fancy equipped army that 300,000 the U.S. had paid for and then the collapse of the government, which the U.S. had uh, put in place over the last 20 years. Uh, it just is a reminder of the asymmetrical and the very difficult and complex uh, political and economic and social conditions in a country like Afghanistan, which the United States has no business in trying to turn into a democracy. Just after the attacks, I remember I was in radio and I interviewed journalist Alexander Coburn and he, he told us about how um, many Americans after the attacks said, why would anyone do this? They simply didn't understand why they had been targeted. Do you think that 20 years on, Americans understand more uh, about what motivated those attacks? I'm not sure, because Americans are very insular and very locally focused, and we've seen this in the polarization over the Trump administration and in domestic politics right now. Joe Biden certainly has learned these lessons, and his emphasis on diplomacy, his emphasis on multilateralism, his emphasis on the climate and on COVID and the kind of issues that really do matter to uh, the future of our, our humanity. Uh, are his priorities, not uh, countering um, in, in, in a nation-building experiment uh, the terrorism that is still uh, too widespread in the world, but it's also the concern of countries like Mozambique and, and Nigeria and, uh, and so many others that have been afflicted by factionalism. How you get to the root causes that lead to this. The, 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 you know, Osama bin Laden didn't come from, from nowhere. He came from Saudi Arabia, and that's its own problem, you see. So the root causes of terrorism need to be addressed. But in the short term, that's a criminal action. What is more important to realize is that the political involvement that the U.S. has embarked on, first in Vietnam and then in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, just simply will not work. Do you think that the United States could ever be vulnerable to similar 
attacks again. In the aftermath of 9-11, there were so many questions raised about security lapses, things that were missed, things that should have been dealt with. We've seen huge security tightening uh, since then. But um, from a sort of security point of view, but also from a, a, an awareness of, of the threats facing them, do you think the USA could ever be as vulnerable again? They claim that, that, that they've addressed the problem of foreign terrorists. What worries me much more, Sally, and we saw it on January 6th, is the internal right-wing uh, inclination to use force and, and to subvert democracy in ways that um, we in here in South Africa are debating right now with the political violence that occurred in July. Uh, it is it is in fact the case, and Biden makes this very clear, as so does Cyril Ramaphosa, that the domestic health of a country is really what drives its foreign policy, its international reputation, its soft power, all the things which lead to influence and to a better world. And those are very difficult questions, obviously, but it is a real concern that there are 330 million guns in American hands right now, that the right wing has been prone to violence in the, the, the U.S., much more so than, than the so-called alleged Antifa or anti-fascist uh, left wing uh, that, that Biden talks so much about. It's the, it's the extremism that is born of, you know, transformation of political cultures. America is becoming more diverse, more like South Africa, and it's not sitting well with white ethnic nationalists. They're prone to violence. Thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. That was Wits University Honorary Professor of International Relations, John Stremlau.